Welcome to another Beer and Code. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Uh, sorry I haven't posted many videos lately. Uh, today I am once again talking about Java 8. Uh, I will be hopping back into .NET pretty soon here and some JavaScript, but since Java 8 was just released uh, yesterday as of this recording, I wanted to talk about that a little bit more. I also want to talk about the beer that I am drinking. This is New Belgium's 1554. Uh, it's called a black lager, and it's kind of between a stout and a lager, and it is uh, very easy drinking, very, very, very good. Um, it's just snow here, so it's very good comfort beer for the cold weather. Yum. All right, and now uh, more on the topic. In particular, I'm going to be talking about default methods on interfaces. This is a new feature to Java 1.8, and it kind of screws with the idea of the fact that interfaces cannot define method bodies. They can now, though. So it kind of turns interfaces into a special abstract class. The main difference between an interface with default methods and an abstract class is that the interface can still not define uh, member variables or constructors or things like that. So it's still a um, more generic version uh, of an abstract class. Um, let's have a look at what some of these default methods look like. So I have some contrived examples. Sorry about that. Uh, but it's just the easiest way to kind of show these things. So I have an interface that has a say nothing method. And this is your standard run of the mill abstract method that is not defined or doesn't have a, a body defined. And then we have an example of a default method. And this default method, signified by the default keyword, this default method is defined in terms of the other abstract methods. And But it's, it's really odd seeing this in an interface. But you can now define method bodies. So let's have a look how implementing one of those works. So. All right, so imp, beer's in the way, imp. Ah. Implements interface A. Oopsies. And now we're going to implement the methods. And as you can see, it's only requiring me to implement the say nothing method. Because if you look here, that is the only abstract method. This one here is already defined for us in the interface. So I will uh, implement say nothing. Sys out. Crickets. All right, so that's that's all well and good. Let's have a look at what that looks like. I dot say nothing. I dot say int six. All right, so now because the say int and say nothing method, uh, sorry, because the say int method does whatever say nothing did, it should actually say crickets twice. So. Let's give it a shot. Boom. So it says crickets twice. Now things get a little bit more complicated when you implement two interfaces, especially if those two interfaces share a default method. And that's actually kind of where the, yeah, things get hairy. Because since now you've implemented two methods that have two different implementations, how does Java know? which one to use. And I'll show you how that sort of plays out in a second here. So we're going to add on the implementation to interface B. Add the say string. So so I'm going to sys out uh, just the string. And now I'm still, I still, now that I've implemented this one abstract method that's on this interface, now I'm still getting a compile error. And let me run that for you to show what that does. All right, so you can see I got a compiler error. Make sure you can see that. Duplicate default methods named say int with parameters int and int are inherited from the type interface B and interface A. So luckily, the compiler gives us a pretty good reason for the compiler error. And what it's saying is because, sorry, because implementer now implements interface A and interface B, which both define this say int method, it doesn't know which one to use. So in order to get around that, it actually requires you to implement that method yourself. So now 
I have to, because I inherited two of them, I have to write a version myself. So I'm going to override that method, and I'm going to just do no more conflict. So now I can call, say, int here. And now it's actually going to call this, this new method that I implemented here. Crickets and no more conflict. So uh, to sum this up, when you have two interfaces that, say, that define the same method, say int and say int, and you have one class that implements both of them, first of all, that's a bad idea. Um, you're probably doing something wrong uh, if you do this. You're, you're putting yourself into a kind of a bad situation. So I would try to stay away from this if you can. But if you find yourself in a position where it does happen, you then are required to define that method yourself, and it ignores the implementation in both of those interfaces, as you can see right here. So once again, try not to do this. Um, I can't think of a really good reason why you would want to, but now you can kind of see how that changes the inheritance model and things like that. Um, mainly it just adds on to it where you get these extra default methods, uh, which is really nice. Uh, it can complicate things when you're inheriting two different interfaces like that, uh, but in practice, you should really not be seeing that. So um, thanks for tuning in for this uh, hopefully quick beer in code. Um, I am going to maybe do a couple more of this Java 8 stuff and then switch over to doing more .NET. So uh, let me know if you enjoyed this and if you learned from it. And thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you to the YouTuber who suggested I go into this topic a little bit more. So yeah, thanks all around. Cheers.